Folks, I love the Shadow Pieces boss fights. It is my favorite in the entire game. And that's why it has taken me so long to discuss this side of it, because I've always wanted to preserve the sanctity of it. That said, this has kind of grown on me, and it's now too cool just not to share. We'll be building off Hammed DST's video on the subject from almost two years ago at this point. But as they tailored it more to a nightmare fuel farm, we're just simply showcasing the cheese method for the fun of it because we don't often do that on this channel. Thing is though, however, this cheese only works once you've already murdered the nightmares of all nightmares, as there is a specific reason as to why this upcoming method even works. For you see, the origin of this cheese comes from the fact that we have always been able to summon any amount of any specific shadow piece that we have wished to with our very own marble statues. Heck, I showed you that way back when in our shadow pieces video. So, you want to make 70 knights, bishops, or rooks? Go for it. It's suicide, but hey, it's a thing you can do. So with that said, could we actually win this unwinnable fight? Could we concentrate on one of the three, get dozens of them to level three, and then complete the encounter to net a loot pool like no other? The short answer, yes. Yes, we can. But first things first, we'll be needing the sketches of the clockwork pieces that drop from their marble counterparts. And we can obtain these via mining the marble sculptures during a full moon or a new moon. The former, of course, spawning regular clockworks, with the latter being the bosses. But whatever the case, we ourselves need now to create our own statues of the beasts via a potter's wheel. And we are specifically looking to craft one of each of the Rook and Bishop, and as many as we bloody can or wish to, for the Knights. Why? Well, we'll get to that. Cause the backbreaking work ain't quite done yet. We can now choose to walk all of these knight statues onto a boat, row them out a couple strokes, anchor them there, and then hop on back over to land ourselves. And nice work, if you've done this, you're practically almost done. Note though, I say this is a choice because some folk do place the bishop and rook on the boat and then fight them there, but that's too small space in my book. Plus, I've always found it easier to control the knights on the edges than when they're just free roaming on land. But now comes the important bit everyone, the murder method. Or actually, methods in this case, as there are really only two viable ways to handle what could possibly be a stack of 20 plus Shadow Knights at once. Gunpowder here, or what known as catapults. For gunpowder to work, we are gonna need at least 41 piles of it, so we've got some work to do. The charcoal is the easiest bit. Burn down a forest and you're golden immediately. Now the niter might be a bit tricky, depending on world generation, of course, and just how much you're using it for summer survival. But it has a lot of sources, so I don't think it's gonna be that hard to manage. The rotten eggs, on the other hand, they're gonna be an issue. That said, running the edges of your world during winter to spawn just countless numbers of pango colonies, and then waiting for them to die off, is gonna net you guaranteed rotten eggs, so that ain't too bad actually either. But here's an interesting alternative to anyone playing at home. Spore clouds. In short, Toadstool's attacks here spoils perishable items very quickly. So if we simply spawn him in, get a spore to explode, drop our stack of eggs in the cloud, and then simply run from the fight because he'll just de-aggro and despawn, they're going to be rotten and we can rapidly farm these needed materials if we want to. So good luck. But also remember that murder option number two is still on the table, folks, if that all seems out of reach to you. Yes, we're known as catapults do in fact damage the shadow pieces. So in essence, they're just going to be doing our job for us in the end. They're arguably cheaper too, as you only need to have to set them up once and forget about them for the rest of time, as compared to compiling gunpowder every single bloody time you want to do this strat. So then. I would learn up on how to change characters via the Celestial Portal if you aren't already playing Winona here. But for now, we are sticking with the gunpowder method first, so we will also need one last thing for the fight, folks. 
A fire staff. Well, actually, we just need a way to light the gunpowder we're about to be placing under the knights on the edges from as far away as we can be. So, there are other options, yes. However, a fire staff is cheap and easy to use. So it's gonna be my first choice pretty much every time. Don't forget it. But Beard, what is this strat and why does it work? Well, the fight itself actually plays out exactly the same apart from the fact that the Shadow Knights that spawned on the boat simply cannot walk over the edges of the mainland and thus take no part in the fight essentially. They're certainly still gonna aggro on you, and that's the important part because we can kinda control them as we run back and forth. But, now you also see why it's the knights that we focus on, as if you don't recall, Shadow Rooks and Bishops teleports. Knights don't. Oh, and don't forget to place the gunpowder before the fight either like this bearded idiot did. But it's time folks. Progress through the fight with the rook and the bishop as normal. Get the knights to level 3 and then walk them over to your first deck of gunpowder. Light that sucker up. Wait a few seconds and watch every single one of those level 3 knights lose 8,000 health in an instant. But Hold up, slow it down after that. Bosses have explosion resistance in this game. These guys do too, so we gotta wait. Wait about 10 to 15 seconds, that is. Then, we can light the other pile of at least one gunpowder already set on the opposite side of the edge, and you have done it, folks. You have successfully farmed 20 plus Shadow Knights at once. And that's on the low side of things. You could easily create hundreds of Knight statues for this, and it will work all the bloody same. So enjoy. But yes, before we talk the utterly ridiculous amount of potential loot we get from this, we've got to briefly showcase how this all looks without the use of gunpowder. And once more, you'll just be progressing through the fight as you typically would, but once the knights have leveled up, all you need to do is power up whatever generator you've got powering your catapults. Then, you literally have to do nothing but wait for like 4 to 5 minutes until they're all dead. Ideally, you would want every single catapult to fling it at them to speed things up a little bit. But be weary of them being able to get damaged by the rook or bishop during the initial parts of the fight, so placement might be a bit strange. Whatever the case, both methods work like a charm. So now, the loot. Is it all worth it, Beard? Well, considering that level 3 shadow pieces all drop the same amount of loot no matter what, that being 4-6 to six Night Refuel, 1 Dark Sword, 1 Night Armor, and 1 Shadow Atrium, mind you, then yes, I say it's bloody dang worth it. I mean, I only used 20 knights as a baseline, and I still would have gotten over 100 Nightmare Fuel, 20 Dark Swords, 20 pieces of Knight Armor, and 20 Hearts. Yeah, you do the math. It can get pretty nuts. Good luck. Oh, but what about Slurtle Slime Beard? Could that actually be a good substitute here? Sure, if you have 80 bajillion of the crap. Remember now, Gunpowder deals 200 damage. Slurtle Slime does 50. So yeah, you gotta do the math there too, everyone. But there you have it, folks. Just a fun little showcase of a really neat way to use the game against itself for a pool of nightmarish loot. And bloody heck, boats are useful. But well done to those who put two and two together to even come up with this back in the day. As you have finally won me over, and even I am gonna kinda consider my favorite fight a little differently from here on out. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Beware the boom. And I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.